Hi, I am Chief Curator at Peoria Riverfront Museum, Bill Conger, and I'm inviting you to take a walk with me through Angle Edge Plain, the sculpture of Ronald Bladen, which was generously sponsored by Sharon and John Amdahl. This exhibition really examines an artist who has contributed much to the history of uh, art in Peoria, Illinois, as the Sonar Tide, the largest, most important uh, public commission in our city, exists and was installed at the Peoria Civic Center in 1983, designed and uh, really imagined by this artist, Ronald Bladen. Ronald Bladen is a forefather of the art movement called minimalism, which was really introduced from America in the mid 1960s into the 1970s and beyond. Minimalism is best understood through the idea that in the early 1900s, America really had no identity outside of its European roots. And that, that held true in art as well. So in order to create an identity that the world could understand, America really had to look at their European roots and start to kind of chop away and get rid of those references. And over time, through a number of different movements, abstract expressionism and pop art, we arrive at minimalism, which is really the most important uh, contribution to the trajectory of art uh, in the history of the world. Minimalism is the shedding away, the, the reduction of content and form uh, to, its, uh, to uh, a most primal essence. And that's really what America was doing in, in the mid 1960s. Ronald Bladen is one of the oldest minimalist sculptors. Uh, many of the more uh, talked about sculptors in, in art history all looked at Bladen uh, for inspiration. This work I'm standing in the middle of is called Chevrons, and it's a work from 1974. This work is exhibited in our museum the way that it was designed to be seen in an interior. Many of Bladen's works exist outdoors, like our own Sonar Tide in Peoria, Illinois. But Chevron's is designed for an interior space. And really what minimalism and what Bladen is doing here is inviting an interaction with the viewer and the body. So as you see, there are rows of these Chevron shapes that invite you to experience the space between them, to examine, are they pointing? Are they going this direction or are they moving this direction? Or is there any movement whatsoever? Their form really communicates something to the body. And being in the middle of this installation as I am right now, you begin to kind of get a feeling for what these shapes, what the forms, the scale of the forms, what they're connecting uh, in terms of, of energy and, and movement and this dynamic quality of, of, uh, of sculpture, really. Uh, this is a new concept in the 1960s and 70s. Again, this work is from 1974. It's a very important work and it's very exciting to uh, be a part of. In earlier work than Chevron's, probably Bladen's masterpiece is called X from 1965. We have a number of sketches, uh, his preliminary drawings for large scale sculptures in this exhibition. They come from his own studio, from his desk, from his hand. And we have behind me the, uh, one of the preliminary drawings for X. The information uh, uh, panel here shows X as it was installed famously at the Corcoran Museum in Washington, DC in 1965. We normally see t sculpture like this today, this minimalist work outdoors and constructed of steel, often in this black coloration like X's. However, Bladen arrives on this discovery so early, he can't even afford to make these out of steel yet. So he is building these structures out of wood and then sheathing them in plywood and painting them black um, to create, I believe, a void, a kind of hole in the space, as it were. 
Also, this great installation of X in the Corcoran is really uncomfortably large. It pushes into the second tier of the museum um, and the bottom portion pushes outward almost as if it really doesn't want to be in the space or it's trying to escape. The interesting thing about X, as we understand an X to be two converging lines, X is not really an X at all. It actually is uh, kind of dissected, bisected in the center here by a rectangle. And the external digits that point out here actually differ as well. The bottom two sit flush to the floor, while the upper two actually are cut at an angle. This, if you look at this uh, in the eyes of a minimalist, one who has taken something and, and created a reduced form uh, or a reduced study of it, you may determine that this is actually a figure with legs and arms outstretched, not unlike Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, I might add. If this is a figure, which I believe it is, we can start to look at Bladen's work in a different way. His work consistently talks about us as beings, as bodies, and he examines how we interact with the space that we're in and the space around the sculpture. The sculpture, in a sense, wants to be invisible. It really wants us to react uh, to it and pay attention to the space around it and pay attention to the energy and the movement within that space that that sculpture has created. These were fascinating inventions for, for the 1960s and they have persevered and stood the test of time as minimalism is still explored in contemporary art in a, a most pervasive way. I am standing in front of a maquette, which is a fancy French term for model, small version of what will be a much larger work of art. And this maquette is of Black Lightning, which was produced in 1981. That is two years prior to Peoria, Illinois commission, Sonar Tide. And I thought we'd take a look at this real fast to take a look at some of the similarities to Sonar Tide and some of the differences. Obviously, we can see a similar lifting, this movement upward, which, which our work uh, exhibits. However, the use of the recognizable lightning bolt uh, and its kind of slab construction really points to the fact that this could have been drawn flatly on a piece of paper and then given volume and kind of righted upright, uh, made into an object. Sonar Tide, as we're going to see next, exhibits um, many more nuances and, and difficulties in terms of really understanding how important the shape and form are to our understanding of the space that it's in. Installed in 1983, Sonar Tide was designed by Ronald Bladen. It was the second pick for this location in front of Philip Johnson's Civic Center in Peoria. Johnson likely himself picked Richard Serra to uh, actually be featured in this courtyard. The work that Richard Serra, very famous, uh, continual famous today uh, and still living sculptor um, proposed uh, was harsh and aggressive, and the city deemed it not appropriate for our town. And we found the work of Ronald Bladen uh, to be more uh, purposeful in terms of its placement in our brand new Civic Center. The Bladen work is an, a piece that really talks about optimism and confidence of a Rust Belt city that is moving forward in, into the future and really attempting to do new and different things. That optimism was true in 1983 as it is today. The Sonar Tide work still exists in the same place as it did nearly 40 years ago when it was installed. And that optimism still bespeaks Peoria and conveys a lot of information to any visitor of our town. For that reason, Angle Edge Plain, the works of Ronald Bladen, 
was an important exhibition for Peoria Riverfront Museum to do. And hopefully you've learned a lot about our own work, this most important Ronald Bladen sculpture, Sonar Tide, as you have this American master, Canadian American master, I should add, Ronald Bladen. Please visit us to see Ronald Bladen Angle Edge Plane through September 6th. And thanks to the sponsors of this exhibition, Sharon and John Amdahl, to our Visionary Society members, and to members of the museum. Please come see this. We hope you enjoy.